Hi guys. It is a gray, gloomy day here in the end times in paradise, somewhere in upstate western New York where it's uh, about 68 degrees on this summer day. That would make it now Monday afternoon, I believe, July 30th, 2018. And uh, so as hard as it is to believe that this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire anywhere other than here. I just finished part one of today's Doomer Headlines Roundup rant where I pretty much do a climate change roundup rant every single day in the summer of 2018. So you can look for that elsewhere. So this is part two. These are just, well, I was just going to say these uh, stories have nothing to do with climate change. And then I'm thinking, what the hell are you talking about, Hambone? Uh, the, the, the first story out of the pack uh, has everything to do with climate change. And several Alert Tribes members have sent me this story, many versions of it, all over the mainstream media this weekend. Uh, this, it, you know, every once in a while, a, a story crosses my radar that absolutely epitomizes everything that is wrong with this planet, that connects every one of the Humpty Dumpty tribe dots pretty much. Uh, and, and this goddamn story, I could do an entire rant, probably should do an entire rant, but uh, you know, what, what can I add? This is Huff Post version of this sad, twisted tale. Polar bear killed after attacking cruise ship worker in the Arctic. A polar bear was killed on Saturday after it attacked a bear guard, leading clueless fucking morons off a German cruise ship near the North Pole in Norway. The unidentified clueless fucking moron suffered unspecified, unspecified injuries to his clueless fucking head, but unfortunately they were not life-threatening, and he, unlike the dead polar bear, was in stable condition shortly after the attack. Hmm. The bear was shot by another clueless fucking moron employee of the ship, the MS Clueless Fucking Moron, in an act of self-defense. A spokeswoman for the Clueless Fucking Moron cruise line told the Associated Press, uh, bear watchers, as they're called on the cruise line's website, are armed and accompany nature guides when they take clueless fucking morons on tours off the ship. There you go. All ships in the area are required to have bear guards to protect clueless fucking morons from polar bears as they sightsee. Quoting one of the uh, these goddamn polar bear murderers from the cruise company's website, quote, there are very strict rules here as the islands are visited by many polar bears in the summer so we will, we clueless fucking moron humans, all need to be vigilant when we are ashore. Yes, uh, how about these for some very strict rules? Keep your fucking clueless fucking moron passengers on the ship. That would be 
rule number one. Rule number two are get your fucking ships out of the Arctic Ocean. That would be rule number two. Rule number three would be send every fucking cruise ship from St. Croix to the North Pole to the bottom of the ocean with every one of you clueless fucking morons on it. Uh, the, the, the single biggest clueless fucking moron industry on planet Earth. Critics said in the wake of the attack that such polar bear human confrontations are bound to increase as Arctic tourist traffic skyrockets. No shit, Sherlock. 18 cruise ships will be docking at the site of the polar bear murder this week alone. The polar bear is being hit hard by the effects of global warming. Yes. Uh, and they're now being, they're now under the Endangered Species Act. But of course, it's completely legal to kill a polar bear for acting like a polar bear. Here is some tweets. Leave the bears alone. Let them be. Stop the tours. No shit, Sherlock. Here is, so, it was killed for being a bear in its natural environment. Keep an eye out and avoid the polar bears. They're already facing enough problems as a species. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, from the shithole North Pole to the shithole Mediterranean Ocean. Wow. Over 1,200 migrants, over 1,200 African migrants rescued off Spanish coast in just two days. Spain said on Saturday it had rescued more than 1,200 migrants from the sea in two days as the country's interior minister called for a European-wide solution to illegal immigration. Yes. Uh, Fernando Gran Marlasca said Spain had now seen, quote, on the ground the problems that exist. The problem of immigration, which is a European problem, which requires a European solution. I would say maybe it requires an African solution, but it we won't go there. And earlier this week, you know, already talking about those hundreds of African migrants uh, storming that fence. Uh, anyway, I think we get it. What is going on uh, with our favorite billionaire Charles Koch of the Koch brothers? Charles Koch says trade war could be disastrous. No shit, Sherlock. President Donald Trump's growing trade dispute could send the U.S. economy plunging into a recession. Charles Koch warned on Sunday. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. And added that only through bipartisan action can there be a check on Trump's policies these donors see as potentially disastrous. D D D. Okay. Wow. In case you're not aware of this, let the national interest explain this to you. 
China will soon be able to destroy every satellite in space. No shit, Sherlock. And the U.S. military should be worried. Uh, of course, what the article does not say is that the U.S. military can also destroy every satellite in space. DK, let's look. Uh, let's go over there to, I guess, the shithole border between India and Pakistan. This is kind of the political border. India says it hopes that, you know, the, the country of India talks. India says it hopes new Pakistan government will work for terror-free South Asia. India on Saturday said it hoped the new government of Pakistan would work constructively to end militancy in South Asia. Yes. Uh, let's see. We hope that the new government of Pakistan, led by cricket star turned politician Imran Khan, will work constructively to build a safe, stable, secure, and developed South Asia free of terror and violence. Meanwhile, India accuses Pakistan of backing several anti-India militant groups in the divided Kashmir region to stoke violence there. No shit, Sherlock. D, D, D. Asking the question, Reuters News asking the question, why is Saudi Arabia halting oil shipments through the Red Sea? It could be because uh, they don't want to get their clueless moron asses uh, sent to the bottom of the Red Sea. Saudi Arabia announced last week it was suspending uh, all oil shipments through the Red Sea's Bab el Mendeb Strait after Yemen's Iran aligned Houthis attacked two ships in the waterway. A full blockage of the strategic waterway would virtually halt shipment to Europe and the United States of about 4.8 million barrels per day of crude oil and refined petroleum products. Hmm. All of this is risking deeper involvement in a war seen as a proxy battle for regional supremacy between Saudi Arabia and Iran. And anybody who does not understand why this story does not belong in a doomsday headline roundup, I don't have time to explain it to you now because we need to head over to the shithole country of China where Watchdog, Watchdog urges China to clamp down on imports of illegal timber. Beijing must better scrutinize imports of illegally logged timber from countries such as Papua New Guinea, where deforestation is devastating ecosystems and livelihoods, Global Witness said on Monday. The watchdog organization said in a new report that a large number of logging operations in the Pacific nation violated local laws 
despite holding government issued permits. No shit, Sherlock. The alleged violations include corruption and bribery in the issue of the permits. This is from New Guinea logging without the consent of indigenous landowners and the exporting of timber above amounts that are legally allowed. Hmm. Quoting the report, China is the world's largest consumer and manufacturer of wood and wood products, yet it has no regulation to keep illegal timber from entering its borders. No shit, Sherlock. Global Witness said Papua New Guinea provides 29% of China's tropical log imports, making it the country's single largest supplier. Uh, meanwhile, the deforestation rate in New Guinea was unusually high in recent years with 640,000 hectares. That is about, uh, good God, one and a half million acres of rainforest lost in the past five years. Okay, from the shithole country of New Guinea and China to the shithole country of Scotland, where we see Donald Trump's golf course destroyed protected land in Scotland. No shit, Sherlock. Newly released documents confirm fears that one of President Donald Trump's golf resorts in Scotland has destroyed portions of a protected coastal island. Uh, as much as 168 acres have been destroyed uh, as a result of Donald Trump's golf course. Uh, well, you know, I'm sorry for that, but uh, you should take a look over here in this shithole country at the millions of acres Donald Trump's uh, environmental policies have destroyed of protected land here in the United States. Let's see, where is this next one? Uh, I guess Zombie Island, the shithole uh, country of England, 14-year-old student referred to terror prevention program after he was, quote, groomed by anti-fracking activist. <clears throat> A 14-year-old A-plus student was referred to the government's anti-terror program uh, after uh, he signed an online social media petition against fracking. Yes, uh, Aaron was referred to the anti-terror program by his school due to concerns about his extreme beliefs in relation to the environment, specifically about fracking. Jesus. Uh, anyway, this is one more reason I do not sign social media social media uh, petitions. Just one more reason. Okay, many versions of this story. New dolphin whale hybrid sea creature is the spawn of an unholy union. 
I, I'm not going to waste any more of my, uh, I'm not going to insult my intelligence or yours anymore on that story. So let's go to the shithole uh, planet of Mars where we see the question, what will humans eat on Mars after permanent colonization? The answer to that question is kind of like, you know, it's kind of like that question, when did you stop beating your life, your wife? Uh, humans will never need to figure out what to eat on Mars after permanent colonization because there will not be permanent colonization on Mars. Anyway, and only one of the many reasons for that is terraforming Mars might be, might be impossible due to a lack of carbon dioxide. Science fiction has long dreamed of turning Mars into a second Earth a place where humans could live without having to put on a spacesuit. The easiest way to do that would be to use carbon dioxide already on Mars to create a new atmosphere, but now researchers say that is impossible. Hmm, do you think so? Because there is no carbon dioxide on Mars to do this with. But of course, I'm sure someone's going to come up with the idea, why don't we just send our own carbon dioxide to Mars? But of course, uh, the, the most important story, and I read every word of this, the big question I know on my mind a hell of a lot more important than what will humans eat on Mars is from Consumer Reports Honda versus Toro who makes the best push mower and I'm gonna let you research that yourself I already know the answer All right, let's see, what are the clueless morons up to this week? The Kiki Challenge. Police warn against dangerous viral dance. Police around the world have warned people against doing the Kiki Challenge <coughs> after multiple clueless fucking morons attempting the viral dance have been injured. The Kiki Challenge, also known as the In My Feelings Challenge, involves jumping out of a moving car and dancing alongside it to Drake's hit In My Feelings while the car continues moving. Some videos of the dances uploaded to the internet show oblivious dancers crashing into poles, tripping on potholes, or falling out of the cars. One video shows a woman having her handbag stolen while attempting the challenge, and another shows a man being hit by a car while he dances. The craze began when internet comedian Shiggy posted a video to Instagram of himself dancing to the song, and since his video went viral, thousands of clueless fucking morons have taken up the challenge. But uh, I don't know if Kim Kardashian has taken up that challenge but it looks like uh, Kim is under fire for uh, thanking 
her sister for saying she looks anorexic. And I'm looking at, uh, at Kim Kardashian, and I assure you that ass is not anorexic. Uh, good Lord, you could fit three sub-Saharan Africans uh, in Kim Kardashian's panties. Kim is actually, I don't know how tall Kim is. She is claiming she weighs 119 pounds. A number of people on social media have come out to criticize Kim for putting this unhealthy message, thanking her sister for calling her anorexic, out there to her 114 million, her 114 million Instagram followers, most of whom are impressionable young women. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. And one more if you like that story. What is Chloe up to? Chloe Kardashian mom shamed for not supporting her daughter's neck. Oh, Jesus. Guys, we're so fucked. Anyway, the little dog needs to get to the cemetery to chase some chippies, so I'm going to wrap this up and call it a day. Bye, guys.